everybody, Fiber Spider back again in the kitchen with another tasty video for you. Today we are going to be making a cookie. Yes, you heard me right, a cookie. But it is a really good cookie. It is perfect for if you want something, you know, a little sweet, but you don't want to make a whole batch of cookies, uh, whether it's just because you want something for yourself or there's nobody around else to share. So this is perfect. It is a single serving of a cookie. Very, very delicious. Makes me think of sort of a very basic cookie dough type recipe, but it's a small amount, so it's perfect for one person. I have tried it once before, it came out awesome, and I could not wait to share it with you. So, without further ado, we shall get started. By the way, also, all of the ingredients are listed in the description box as per usual. So, let's get to it. Hello again. All right, so I believe I have everything that I need already laid out and ready to go. And I already started with two tablespoons of softened butter, not melted, just room temperature soft, all ready to go in there. And we are gonna start with our sugars. Now, I already pre-measured out two tablespoons of brown sugar. I had light brown sugar. I didn't have dark brown. Honestly, I'm, I'm not that much of a culinary expert to know the difference, but I have two tablespoons of brown sugar here. Gonna add that in. And I already made sure that there were no hard clumps in there. And then we also need one tablespoon of regular granulated sugar. There we go. And you really do not need a big bowl for this particular recipe, hence the itty bitty bowl. So going to start to mix this together. And at a certain point, yes, I'm going to switch gears and I'm going to go in with my handsies. Um, yes, I did thoroughly wash my hands prior to starting this video, um, but I find that it works a lot better using your hands than tools. Also, I love anything tactile. So just mixing this together and then we are going to add in some more ingredients. So it, it's essentially like wet sand right now. In fact, let me grab a second spurtle. Scrape, 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 scrape. Go in again. Also, if you have a, an electric mixer, more power to you, honestly, I, I generally do not use gadgets like that if I can avoid it. So that's our beginning. Now I'm going to add one egg yolk and this actually one of my coworkers has chickens so that explains why the the yolk is very very orangey. Um, thank you Melanie. <laughs> and that, that's the name of the coworker, not the chicken. Um, so adding in the egg yolk and a quarter of a teaspoon of vanilla extract. There we go. Okay. And then give this a little bit more of a mixy mixy and then we will get in with our flour now i have all purpose flour look at that yellow mm. it's a thing of beauty okay so now our all-purpose flour one third of a cup my little scoop here. There we go. And dump that in. Okay, next up we need just a little bit of 
baking soda and a little bit of salt. So I have my itty bitty spoons. There's smidgen, pinch, and dash. I'm gonna use a dash. <laughs> it, it calls for an eighth of a teaspoon. Um, this'll work. <laughs> So I'm gonna put in a dash of baking soda and then a dash of salt. Okay, so got a dash and then we will do a dash of salt. There we go. Voila. Okay, we are in, believe it or not, the home stretch. Now, what I noticed when I made this up the first time is that it seems extremely dry and that it's not coming together. Well, that's where the hands come into play. And don't you worry, they will. Okay, looks lovely already. Actually, I might not even need to use my hands. Perhaps because the last time I made this, I used store-bought eggs. But, oh, this looks gorgeous. So lovely. All right, last thing last. All right, we have chocolate chips. And I also got almonds as well. Now, you can, of course, use whatever it is that you like. I love dark chocolate chips. Indeed I do. So I'm going to add a quarter of a cup of dark chocolate chips. There we go. And I'm also going to add some almonds. Now it says about two tablespoons of nuts. I'm going to eyeball it. Voila, that works for me. And proceed to mix this up just a wee bit more until everything is all together. And then that will be it. You know, it is really that simple. It's a beautiful thing. All right. And that is our cookie dough. So what I'm gonna do right now actually is I'm gonna start to preheat my oven at 350. And also over here, I have a baking sheet with parchment all ready to go. So if you'll bear with me for just a moment, I'm gonna start preheating my oven and we will continue. Alrighty, so my oven has finally finished preheating to 350 and we are good to go with the dough. So I am not doing anything particularly, you know, schmancy or fancy here. I'm going to just, you know, plop this down onto our parchment paper, like so. Try to get all the doughy goodness. There we go. And not quite, you know, flatten it out because as it bakes, it will spread, but get it a little bit more of a cookie shape than it currently is anyway. Yeah, that more or less works. All right. Get the scrapings and we are good to go. There. Voila. Cookie for one. Here we come. All right. So pop this in the oven. So very hot. Okay. So going to have that in the oven for approximately 22 to 25 minutes or so. And of course, your baking time will vary based on your oven. So I will see you in about 25-ish minutes, okay? I'll see you in a bit. 
Alrighty, so my timer has about a minute left to go, but I think I'm going to pull it out now, and I'm, oh, I can't wait. How gorgeous is this? Absolutely lovely looking. I can't wait to dive in. All right. Yes, I decided to pull it out just like a minute early because I put it in the oven and then I started the timer. So at any rate, the reason why you need to bake it for like 20 minutes is because you need to make sure that the interior of the cookie is baked. Now, I grant that you could take the same dough recipe and divide it into a couple of smaller cookies. Yes, I'm sure you could. But of course, then of course, um, the amount of time for baking would be reduced. I haven't played around with that yet. I may in the future though, but right now I am content with just having a cookie, a really big cookie. <laughs> so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let this cool down and let it settle for a bit and then put it onto a cooling rack and then we shall do the taste test, my favorite part. All right, so I will see you in a bit. All right, now for the taste test. This is, of course, my favorite part of all of these videos. This is a massive cookie. Um, it just about fills up an entire dinner plate, and I could not be more delighted. Woo! The kitchen, by the way, smells divine in here right now. So, to give you an idea, let's, let's break this in half, because it's still nice and toasty-woasty on the, on the middle. And, let's see. Oh, check this out. It's not like brittle. It's it's got a little bit of a cakiness chew going on already. I can tell. This looks incredible. Now the outer edges are a little bit crisper, and the middle is a little bit softer, which is just how I like them. So, bon appetit. Let's give it a whirl. Oh my god. Mm. The chocolate chips are still warm, so they're a little gooey. And the, the, the almonds that I added, a nice touch, gives it a little bit of crunch. Mm. The exterior, of course, is a little bit more done than the interior. It's... It's not too done. It's not like uh, biscotti crunchy. It has a little bit more crunch. It's perfect. Mm. 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 Excuse me. <laughs> so good. It's a little bit cakey, uh, not overtly so, but it is like the perfect level of doneness. Um, I do really, really like the the insides of my cookies to be a little bit more chewy, a little bit more soft, and this fits the bill lovely. Now. Would I recommend this? Most definitely, in case you couldn't tell already. Um, and as I said before about making different sizes of cookies, I'm sure you could, you know. Um, I would suggest offhand in my, you know, rough experience as far as making cookies, um, I would say perhaps maybe divide the dough into four, okay? And then, you know, check out uh, how it looks as if they're baking. Um, and I would say maybe based on the size, I would say, uh, since it's going to be like a quarter of the size, I wouldn't do a quarter of the amount of time. I would say ballpark, maybe about 10 minutes or so, but keep an eye on it. Check the, the doneness on the exterior edge. Play around with it by all means. It is a delightful recipe. It's very simple. It comes together fast. 
and absolutely love it. Um, and of course, it is customizable as well, uh, because if you want to add different, you know, add-ins, you know, whether it's chocolate chips or peanut butter chips, butterscotch, dried fruit, it's absolutely delightful. So thank you ever so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the video, you learned something new, and you're inspired to try to make one of these yourselves. And, you know, if not for yourself, give it to somebody you know and love. So that being said, listen, everybody. Thank you for watching. Hope you're enjoying. And if you did like the video, give a little thumbs up button down below. You know that I appreciate your appreciation. And stay tuned for more because whether I am baking fabulous funky treats in the kitchen, crocheting, knitting, audiobook narrations, origami, and of course my other YouTube channel, Fiber Spider Games, would love to see you there too. And until next time, stay safe. Stay inspired, stay caffeinated, take care of yourselves and each other, all that good stuff. And I will see you in my next video. Bye for now, everybody, and have a great day.